What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Barking for Balance, the podcast where we talk about dogs, but we also talk about whatever it is that's meant to teach, inspire, and entertain. Who's this good-looking guy who's talking right now, assuming you're look, seeing me on the YouTube? Uh, this is Pat the Pac-Man. I am a dog behavior and rehabilitation specialist at Pac-Man to the Rescue, Canine Solutions and Coaching. And speaking of YouTube, speaking of all that stuff, before we kick this off, first of all, what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about one specific thing. Well, a bunch of different things. We're all going to be all over the place. If you've heard this podcast before, you know how that all works out. But the main topic today is going to be, does the specific breed of a dog create specific behaviors? Are, behave, are certain breeds prone to certain behaviors? You're going to find the truth out today on Pac-Man, on the, uh, Barking for Balance from the Pac-Man. So what was I going to say before? I was going to say, have you subscribed to the podcast? Have you subscribed to Barking for Balance? If you haven't, what are you waiting for? You know the routine. Wag your tail on over, slap upon that subscribe button. Amazon, Google, Spotify, and, um, and Apple. Also, make sure you slap a paw on that subscribe button for YouTube. That is under Pac-Man to the rescue, P-A-C-K-M-A-N. You don't want to miss the cool videos. Look at this good-looking face. Mike is so bad, bro. Yeah, we do speak Sicilian in case you're wondering. Mike, you still get these. So what is that he's talking about? That's my Sicilian. We talk about that on the podcast. See how much, how much fun we have here, how cool this thing is? Yeah, gotta, gotta, gotta subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on all the major, uh, uh, major social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, all those, Pac-Man to the rescue, P-A-C-K-M-A-N to the rescue. Make sure you follow all those. Make sure you subscribe. Wag your tail on over. Slap a paw. Make sure you get that done. How many times do I got to say it? If you've already done so, you guys are the best. If you've been if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you heard me before, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I want to talk about breed and behaviors that are associated with breeds. Bed dramatre. It is such a controversial topic, and I really want to shed some light on it because it is so annoying about the, 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 the labeling situation, and it makes things so difficult with people that are trying to get dogs and how to deal with dogs, and it's just this whole big thing. So let's start off with the whole thing about specific behaviors are, tri are affecting specific breeds. Bull shoes. You know what I'm saying? You know, it is so not true. First and flat out, that's not how it works. Here's the thing, guys. Let's 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 talk about this for, for a while, because this is a very, very big topic. And, and I, I actually did a previous podcast where I talk about like not labeling people, not labeling dogs. And this is kind of like the same thing is putting these labels on on the fact that certain breeds are affected by certain behaviors and how they they be that how they they become. Here's the thing. That's not that not the case because first and foremost, let's go through the case, the, the scenario of behaviors such as aggression, such as chewing things up, such as jumping. Those are not triggered by those are not behaviors, okay? Those are reasons, those are outcomes. The outcome of the behavior, okay? What is the real behavior? The real reason why those quote unquote behaviors are there is simple. It's the state of mind that the dog is in. Now, the reason why I so hate the fact that people tell people say that dogs, dog, specific dog breeds have are, are prone to certain behaviors is because it, they're not. What they are is specific breeds have specific needs. That's a different story. Specific breeds have specific needs. It's not that they're their they're, they're, they're behaviors because dogs are dogs. So certain breeds, yes, I 100% agree with the fact that they have certain needs and they also can be triggered if the lack of those needs are met. So, for example, let's talk about shepherd, German shepherds, right? People want a German shepherd. They're most very popular dogs. Everybody knows German shepherds. They're all over the world. But, you know, it's known that they are working dogs. I got news for you. Dogs are working animals, period. You know what I'm saying? So just because a German Shepherd requires more, quote unquote, work, more exercise, more what I say, mental and or physical stimulation, that's really the key is mental and or physical stimulation. A German Shepherd requires more than, let's say, a Chihuahua. The size matter, sure, in that particular case, but also the fact that that is a, a breed that has needs for specific uh, working tasks such as shepherding right so 
in my experience, in my career, the dogs that I've seen that are cattle dogs and herding dogs, those are the ones that really start to develop really bad behavioral issues, including aggression, is specifically because their needs are not met. Well, what is that? Well, how is that possible? People take their dogs walking all the time. I get it. But that specific breed is meant and specifically bred for herding sheep and herding cows. So if you don't have any cows and sheep around the house, then yeah, those dogs are going to be unfulfilled. So it goes back to being unfulfilled, not necessarily under physically, under, under exercise, it's unfulfilled because they're not able to do something that makes them feel like their life is worth living because that's their instincts inside of them is that they need to be doing something specific, but it's not being met. So like with those kind of cases, there's a variety of different things that you could do to make sure that they are fulfilled by doing a task. It doesn't mean they have to do that specific task, okay? Now, the people that argue about the fact that, 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 you know, that, these, that specific breeds are prone to specific behaviors are the same people that, don't, that say that pit bulls are not aggressive dogs. Well, uh, common sense here, guys. Pit bulls were bred to fight. That's what they were bred for. My boy Socks over here was bred to fight. If you look at him, you'd be like, what are you? You wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. I don't believe it. So they're bred to fight. But the thing is that I'm able and was able to take his, his instincts and channel them into and redirect them, channel, channel them into a different way, in a different way where he doesn't have to release those instincts to fight much like a cattle dog wouldn't have to nip at legs or, or chase the cat around the house or chase squirrels or any kind of other breed that is not physically and mentally stimulated, that is not fulfilled as a dog and as a breed, what's going to happen is, yeah, that's, that's the case. They are immediately going to find something to do. They're going to jump. They're going to pull. They're going to bark. They're going to, they're going to dig. They're going to chew things up. They're going to bite. They're going to attack. It just depends on which direction they are going to be alert about something. They're going to want to go after something. They're going to find something to keep them entertained. You know what I'm saying? Keep themselves feeling like they're doing and accomplishing something. Because the misconception, no should have yet developed a myth. The misconception that we people have to understand is that when you take a dog for a walk, for example, that walk, if not done properly, makes no sense. It doesn't fulfill the, the reason and the purpose of what that walk is for. The walk is meant not just to, fit, to, to, to drain the physical and the mental energy, but it is also meant to fulfill the body, fulfill the brain, fulfill the spirit of the dog and the, the body, the spirit, and the brain of the specific breed that that dog is. Make sense? So if you're just letting your dog just smell around and chase things and look for stuff, their brain is like on high alert. They're not in a working mode. The same thing applies running around the backyard. I hear this all the time, all the time. Run around the backyard. That's how my dog gets their exercise. That's how they drain their energy. I throw the ball around. I play with them. Those are excite. Those are excitement driven activities. They're not meant to fulfill the dog. They're not meant to fulfill the brain and the breed of the dog. It doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? So it's simple when it comes to the, 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 the situation is a breed of a dog does not say, well, this, because I hear this all the time. Well, this breed is very barky. This breed is very jumpy. This breed is you know prone to this. And this breed is prone to that. No, the answer is no. Dogs are dogs. Name one dog that doesn't do all that kind of stuff. They all do it. You know, now, again, I'm going to go back to saying this. There are certain dogs that have specific needs. So does that mean that every breed should be adopted by every single dog? Absolutely not. When you have certain dogs that are um, more powerful psychologically, like a Mastiff, a Cane Corso, a Rottweiler, you got to remember those are guard dogs too. So if you don't have that common assertive, you know, attitude. If you're just a pushover, those are the dogs that are kind of going to get in trouble, much like a pit bull. You know, pit bulls get their, get their bad raps, not because of the dog. But pet, look, look at Bindu Socks, my boy Socks over here. Listen, he knows what, his, what, he's, what he's supposed to do, but he's also happy and fulfilled, you know, because he's getting what he needs and he knows his role. So everything is cool. He doesn't have to go back to those old instincts and you could have any kind of dog be aggressive. The whole thing, listen, and I understand because I was on that on that boat. 
you know, ignorance was my thing. And there's a lot of ignorant people that truly believe that the breed affects the behaviors. No, I'll say it again. No, has nothing to do with that. Here I am. Ignorance was my thing. And I'm trying to cure that ignorance by giving the proper information because I was ignorant with not knowing that, that I thought pit bulls were all the devil. You know, that's what you hear. They're, they're, they're killers. They bite. They, you know, every time you, you turn around, they're biting this one and killing that one and animals and dogs and people. That's, that's, that's the thing. But that's not the reality of it. It's the channeling of that. You know, when it comes to like, for example, those cattle dogs that we were talking about, those herding dogs, one of the things that I love to do with those kind of breeds is give them a job that's fulfilling. And it doesn't have to mean that they have to chase beep, echo, they don't have to chase the, the cows and the sheep specifically, or even the cat or the squirrel. No, you put a backpack on them, you know, agility courses, phenomenal, phenomenal activity for, for, for herding and cattle dogs. It's draining the energy. It's fulfilling the brain. It's giving them a purpose. It's fulfilling their purpose and they're happy and they don't have any problems. And those are the dogs. When you couple that with giving them the proper leadership and the proper guidance by establishing directions, boundaries, and limits, right? That's those are the dogs that thrive that don't have any problems and they won't give you any problems because you are taking care of their needs, their wants, and their desires. Bellos are recreano. They're nice and happy and calm and happy. The happy deserves to be said again because they're getting what they want, need, and desire. You know, you know what I'm saying? So the whole point is, you know, it goes back to the whole labeling situation. You know, we put labels on these dogs. Well, these dogs, we know the terriers. And, and listen, a terriers are so this is this is this is something that you want to ingrain in your mind. Terriers are as small as a Yorkie. Or as big as a pit bull, they're all in the terrier category. You know what I'm saying? Again, do they have specific tasks and 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 needs? Absolutely. But like for example, huskies. You know, we all know huskies pull slay. They run. They like to run. You know, the, all the all the huskies that I've worked with, the huskies and malamutes, especially the huskies that I've worked with, people love them because they're beautiful. Okay. Me personally, I have a problem with them because of my allergies, and they're like my kryptonite. But they're beautiful. I would love to have one. They're gorgeous. And people like them for that, for that thing, for that reason. But you got to understand that they have needs. They're bred. They're meant to pull the sled. Basically, they're meant to run. They're meant to go, right? So if we don't do something specific for that, what's going to happen? And a lot of people that don't, they throw them out in the backyard, you know, thinking that oh, a 20-minute walk once, once a week is enough. And then all of a sudden you open the door and they go darting down the road and so-and-so come out and say, well, that's what Huskies do. They bolt out the door. Oh, it pisses me off because no, that's a label. That's not what Huskies do. Okay. Are only Huskies, the dogs that bolt out the door and they run down the street or do other breeds do that as well? We all know that they do that big dog, small dogs, all dogs do that. Right. If their instincts are, if they're not fulfilled, they bolt out the door and they want to go. Huskies, again, specifically do that because of the fact that they want to just take off. But it doesn't mean that other dogs won't do that. Pit bulls, pit bulls attack. So what does that mean? There's no other dog breeds that do that. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Again, as small as Yorkies, Maltese's, Shih Tzu's, right? As big as Mastiff. They're all in the same category. Why is that? It boils down to the same principles. The three things, the three things that we talk about are work rules and then reward, right? If we're focusing on one and not the other or on two and not the other, the third one is never an issue though. That just gets bombarded. The rewards, the food, the toys, the treats, the affection, attention, playtime. That's just gets bombarded. 99% of the time it's done at the wrong time, right? So it nurtures and reinforces the mindset that we don't want or try to get rid of in the first place. So the work component, mental and or physical, but it's not about just doing it. So if you take, oh, I take my dog out for like, you know, a two hour walk every day, but it still doesn't do anything. Well, the first question I ask is, I ask is, well, how does he walk? I mean, at a dot, does he zigzag? Does he, is he nose to the ground? Is he chasing things? Is he looking for stuff? Is he in front of you? Is he pulling? Oh yeah. Those are the reasons. Well, there you go. The reason why that two hour walk is not working is because it's not being done to the point where it's doing what it's supposed to be doing in the first place. So the way you want to think about it is if like, if you go to the gym 
right? And you're there for two hours and you do an exercise and then you're talking to so-and-so for 10 minutes and then you do another exercise and then you're playing with your phone for 10 minutes and then you do another exercise and then you're watching the TV for 15 minutes. Yeah, you're at the gym for two hours, but you ain't walking for, you ain't working for two hours, right? You're not getting the, re- the, the, the benefits in that, of that two hours. So that's, my, that's the whole point behind the walk. Now, certain breeds, again, require more specific exercise, more, um, more exercise. Socks was one of those. Let me put your foot up inside. Don't remind me. I used to walk him three times a day for an hour and a half each walk. Plus, he would go to the dog park three times a week. Plus, I had a dog walker taking him out three times a week for an hour. Plus, I would do in the house stuff just to keep him occupied because he was so destructive and disruptive that if I have I should have would not beautiful boy. I love that guy now. But that's the kind of stuff that was necessary for a dog of his caliber. Now, does that mean that that's what that's what specific dogs uh, that's what that's what people need to do? If you want that dog, yes, that's what you need to do. If you want your a German Shepherd, if you want a, a Husky, if you want a cattle dog, then yeah, you got to do that stuff. I give give both. The voice said, "You want to sit on the couch and watch TV all this, all the time, or or tickety tickety ticket on your phone and and respond to so and so and to and to talk on the phone." No, you have to do what these dogs require of you, because otherwise, they're gonna go down the wrong path. So let's 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 let me clarify this one last time. Do specific breeds create different? Do, do specific dog breeds have specific behaviors? The answer is no. Do specific dog breeds have specific needs? The answer is hell yeah, absolutely they do, right? Does specific, does, let's say for example, a German Shepherd, we're talking about a German Shepherd, right? Or even better, we were talking about uh, cattle dogs. So you have a cattle dog. So does that mean that every single cattle dog, cattle dog requires the exact amount? The answer is no. You have to look at the individual dog because the individual dog may be more or less than a different than another one. So if you have had, let's say, you know, Australian shepherds or something your whole life, and you usually, again, I'm just going to make things up, usually walk them twice a day for 30 minutes. And that seems to have been enough. But all of a sudden, you get one that needs to be walked an hour. That's because that dog requires more, maybe another one would have required 20 minutes instead of 30, you know, because the energy level is really what makes the dog and also what makes that specific individual dog, right? High, I'm sorry, uh, low, medium, high, and very high. That's the levels of energy that you have to deal with. So you want your dog to match your lifestyle and your, you know, basically what you're willing to put into it along with the breed itself. Because you could have a, a medium level energy cattle dog with a medium level energy, let's say a bulldog, So, you know, the level of required exercise and mental and physical stimulation is a little bit different there. So you have to factor that in. And that's the one thing as to why I always tell people when they want a dog is not to fall in love with what the way that dog looks is not to fall in love with the specific breed. It's to fall in love with the energy of the dog and also do what is necessary for that dog. You know, you have to do what is necessary for the dog itself, not for what you want to do that. Otherwise, that's not going to work. Even other animals. Listen. You guys know I have a zoo. I have a, I have, I have, I have a parrot. I have a tortoise. You know, I've had cats. They're all different requirements of needs that these guys have. That if you want one, you have to fulfill. If you don't, like a parrot, for example, my biggest fear was always about the, you know, the plucking of the feathers. Is speed You know, they pull their feathers out. My, my, every time I would find like a little bitty feather on the, on, on the cage, I'd be panicking and freaking out. Oh, my God. He, you know, for, first of all, that's normal. They do shed or, you know, molt or whatever the word is. Um, but my fear was that he was going to start plucking himself. You know what I mean? Why do birds do that? Because psychologically, there's something wrong. They're not being given what it is that he that they need and want and desire. And that's what ends up happening. You know what I mean? Dogs are the same thing. Other animals did the same thing. They have wants, needs and desires. And our job, if you want one, you got to do it. You know, that's your job. But again, don't let's not put labels on the fact that specific dogs ha- are prone. This one, these, although I hate Pip, that pisses me off when people put the, the, the state of mind too. Yeah, these, these kind of dogs are, are, are notoriously nervous. These kind of dogs are notoriously anxious. 
Come on. Are you kidding me? That's like saying that specific races and specific religions and specific nationalities have specific personality traits. Listen, I, look, I'm Italian. OK, are there certain specific personality traits that Italian have? Sure. But overall, does that mean that every single Italian is in the same bubble? If you believe that, then you got problems. It's we're human. OK, we have different categories, different needs, different ways of, of expressing things, different ways of communicating. Absolutely. Different ways of thinking, feeling, acting. Absolutely. But overall, you can't lump one category into the same thing. Oh, all Italians are this or all all, you know, whatever is this and all of people, these people are that. That's just stupid. That is just stupid and, and, and ignorant, you know, and the same thing applies with dogs. Oh, well, this breed is notoriously anxious and these breed, this, this breed is always bar very barky and this breed is prone to doing this and this. What are, you, what are you talking about? No, if you, a, a dog is barking, if a dog is biting, if a dog is whatever, if a dog is anxious, that means you have not given that dog what they want, need and desire. It's that simple. The three things, work, rules, and then reward, okay? Look in the mirror and understand that that's what's happening here, okay? The labels have to go. Breeds, whatever the breed is, don't expect, oh, I'm going to get, you know, a bulldog, and I got to be careful because bulldogs are whatever. No. Your dog will be whatever it is that you want it to be, whatever it is you want it to become. Socks was a nightmare, and he became what he is now, a therapy dog, perfect in every possible way, okay? He wasn't like that, okay? I guarantee that his first months of life or his first 10 months of life were not being, things were not being done the way that they were done afterwards. That's the reason why he became the way he became. But once we were on the right path, there we go. The three people that adopted him before me, they weren't willing to give him what he wanted, right? That's why God said, I needed him. He needed me match made in heaven. I gave him what he wanted and needed. He gave me what I wanted and needed. It was that simple. You know what I mean? So I had to do what he needed in order for him to do what it is that I, would, I needed. And that's the relationship, guys. That's really the relationship. Don't expect your dog to do first. You have to do first in order to, for your dog to reciprocate back to you. They're always going to love you. That's just what dogs do. They love us to death. That's just normal. But happy, fulfilled, and well-behaved is the key. Remember, what's the mantra around here? It's about training people, not training dogs, right? That's what we do. It's about training people, not training dogs. So if we start looking at the breed, oh, this dog is beautiful. That's fine. But make sure you're able and willing to do the things necessary that that dog requires of you. If not, go somewhere else. A different dog, different size. Hey, Maybe even a different animal to get, maybe no pets at all. You know, this way you don't have to worry about all of a sudden having to, you know, rehome and all that kind of stuff. Makes sense having a dog that's all, you know, psychologically, you know, has issues or, you know, has, has, has all these problems that are now going to make it difficult for him to find a new home. Remember, dogs are not born a specific way, they're made into a specific way by owners that are either good or bad. And by bad, it doesn't necessarily mean evil. Sometimes bad just means that they're just don't know any better. You know, most of my clients, when I, when I, when I, when I teach them what it is that they need to make their dogs the way they want and the way the dogs want to be, guess what? It's not because they're evil. No, they're not evil. They just don't know any better. You know, they're not using and not understanding the psychology and the dog communication. That's why I'm here. You know, people that are evil are just evil. Those people, may fun and cool, but the people that really want to learn, the people want to do what's right. That's different. You know what I mean? And so what our job here is, is to make sure that we provide our dogs what they want, need, and desire as a dog, but also as a specific breed. You know what I mean? So let's, let's stop with this labeling because it really aggravates me when it's, oh, well, the, these breeds are, you know, have, the, no, they don't, they're not, they're, their behavior has nothing to do. Their state of mind has nothing to do with the breed. Get it out of your head. No, the behavior and the state of mind have nothing to do with the breed. I'll say it again. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with that. It's because they're not being fulfilled based on what that specific breed requires. Got news for you. They're, 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 they're working animals and they need to be physically and mentally stimulated, but properly throwing the ball around. Like I said, that's playtime. Now, if you put some structure in there and some rules in there, and now it becomes more of a structured playtime as opposed to just a free for all playtime. Now that's a different story.
because that play time actually has directions, boundaries, and limits. So now it's a different ball game, especially if you're dealing with like a retriever type type dog. If you're just throwing the ball really nilly and the, bringing it back, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Structure, discipline. That's why these dogs like hunting dogs, you know, when they are trained specifically for their task, when they are fulfilling a, 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 a duty, remember, we can't let cattle dogs herd sheep and cattle and, and cows. We can't let pit bulls fight. We can't, they, certain, they can't do certain things. So we have to channel those instincts, make them fulfilled. And therefore, everything is great. Okay. So guys, listen, remember, it's about training people, not training dogs. I really hate the labels. I really hate the labels on dogs. I really hate the labels on people. It, it's, it becomes so complex. Um, you know, the, 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 the way people see the dog community and the dog community itself is just a, a, just a nightmare. We got to try to like come together and, and as one here, because there's just too much chaos. And unfortunately the dogs are the ones, the animals are the ones that pay the price. And because of all this, this one says this, and this one says that it's just all over the place. Listen, I was inexperienced. I had zero dog experience except for my, my little guy, Pina. And here I am bringing a troubled pit bull into my household, living in a, in a condo with no backyard and, and miracles happen from there. So again, let's stop putting the labels down. It's not about the dogs. It's about the person. That's why it's about training people, not training dogs. Okay. Listen, guys, I'd love to hear your input. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, I really would, you know, want to talk further. Want to, you know, my job here is to educate. I really want to educate. I love educating because that's really what's going to help the dog population in a nutshell. And overall, that's really what we need because there's just too much misinformation. There's too much crap, you know, Google and all that stuff is useful for certain things. But when people just start throwing their own opinions out there and they state them as facts, it's just really ridiculous. And so this is not an opinion. This is a fact. So again, if you think about this logically, going back to what I was saying before, some breeds are specifically prone to biting. Some breeds are specifically prone, prone to peeing. I mean, I hear the most ridiculous shit. They're, they're, they're more prone to barking. All dogs do that shit. I mean, come on, think about it. They all do the same thing. It's just the needs of the breed is what's key. So I'm not going to say it again, but you know, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Remember, it's about training people, not training dogs. That's what the whole purpose of this is about. I hope you guys enjoy this episode, guys. If you have any questions, I'm here. I'm Pat the Pac-Man. Catch you guys next time.